So, all right. <coughs> so, sorry. So we're not sawing. What was the set? What's the set of the teeth? Yeah, they bend them. Bend them one way, another one the other way. Yeah. So we have a couple different sets. We have you have a normal set where just each tooth alternates. You have the rake here where they do a flat. So each way is a flat. And then we have wavy where they all kind of alternate out in and out. So why do you think we do a set? Yeah, it gives it space for the material to, to get out. And also what happens with that is that Yeah. So here's our blade. Like that. With the set. So now we've got some space on the sides of the blade so the blade doesn't get stuck. So it helps the blade move through, but also helps get rid of all that extra material. Yeah. And so this whole thing is called the curve. Yes, yeah. Timberland? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so that whole space is called the curve. And so when, whenever you're cutting something, you have the curve, which is the space that's required to make the cut. <clears throat> and so with a bigger curve means that it'll, it'll cut oh, okay. more space in there because you got more room to get rid of material. Um, have ever done it where your saw gets stuck okay. because it just it pinches on it, and so because it doesn't have enough curve. <clears throat> so, what kind of saws do we use mostly in manufacturing? Band saws. Band saws, right? That monster. <clears throat> why? Why do we use band saws a lot? Cuts metal. Yeah. Cut metal with other stuff. Yes, yeah, now reciprocating is just one motion all the way through, right? And then that's a horizontal bandsaw, which are used more often than the vertical bandsaws. Why is the horizontal used more? Because they can use the gravity to just pull it down through the head. Yeah, because you can use gravity to, to bring the, the cutting head down through it. And sometimes they'll be pivoting. Usually for smaller ones, they pivot. You can have a weight that you slide along it to apply more or less pressure. On, on the cut. So, and actually, we did that with. There. We held this down on the bandsaw and just let it do the work to cut through it. So now we've got a nice section cut of a part. <clears throat> so we also it also showed cough wheels, right? The, those are considered sawing because they're kind of going through that that motion through it, just cutting straight through it. What was broaching? Like sanding. Are off the sharp edges? Yeah. No. So using multiple teeth to cut a pathway. Yeah, using multiple teeth. It's kind of like a saw, but now instead of being just teeth that are all the same or just offset in a set, now they're changing shape. So a brooch like this would be for a keyway. So you drill, drill a circle, you put this in, and then guide this pin through it which will gradually go from being a circle oh. shape out to a square shape to, to cut a keyway. Oh, that's when they were doing that. Yeah, so broach. Yeah, that liquid going in there. Yeah. A keyway is, so the circle does that. So you can drill the circle, then you can put a keyway broach in and push it down to cut, cut that. Mm -hmm. And they also did it on the, for the, for yeah. the wrenches the where wrench. it started out as a circle and then gradually built up to being yeah. The hex, the really fat hex, you know. <laughs> but it goes from one shape to another shape by using multiple teeth. So changing shape like that, refining a shape, 
So like on, even on the open end where it kept the same shape but it brought it out to the right dimension. And a lot of times for keyways. And what are keyways used for? Locking two. Locking. Yeah, locking two shafts together, right? So then you have two shafts, each with a keyway on it. One having a male there. And then the other one having a keyway like that. And you just have a, a rectangular piece that fits in that to lock those together when they're together. <coughs> so what we'll purpose is that? So, it'll, it'll so slide they, out, so they can they can slide together, but also, but, but then they'll turn together. So we do it a lot of times on pulleys, yeah, pulleys, front uh, gears, axles. Yeah. 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 So here's the pulley, the keyway on it. Just anything you want it to be able to slide on. Maybe if you need some, some stroke on it. Um, <clears throat> or splines. We cover the brooch, internal splines. So now abrasives. <clears throat> so abrasives is this little piece of sand, right? Um, and so we use it for grinding, polishing, surfacing, and honing, and a lot. So, what is, and then also sanding, right? Mm -hmm. So, what does all that mean? Different types of the grids for different surfaces. Yeah, different types for different surfaces. Um, usually, sanding is some kind of belt or a, a paper backed uh, abrasive, um, either on a disc or on a belt or something like that that you're moving against. Um, <clears throat> grinding is usually a wheel of some kind where it's hard packed. So the, the cutoff wheel or a grinding stone. <clears throat> what can you do with grinding? Can, does it always have to be a, a flat surface? No. Or your grinding surface, so if you had your grinding wheel, it could have cuts in it, or a profile, right? And then you can just press that grinding wheel against your part, and then they'll transfer that profile onto your parts. Like if you had one with the radius, that you want to keep that the same radius. Yeah. Or for like serrated knives, you could have that serration pattern on the grinding wheel, and then it goes to there. And then how do you keep that pattern on the grinding wheel? And how do you, how do you keep the grinding wheel with a good surface on it, even if it's a straight surface. You use a dresser. So on this side is where you put your part in. On the back side, you'd have a dressing wheel that you'd go against every once in a while to re put to put that that pattern, which is a, a, a more like a, a harder adhesive or a harder grinding wheel on the other side that would, that would transfer the pattern back to the main grinding wheel. <clears throat> um, and so, yeah, shapes, getting into places. Um, and what's polishing? You want to finish up this? So, what are you doing as you're polishing? Taking off the edge. You're making it more shiny. But what are you really doing? Taking all the. Taking a little pieces also. Yeah. The little pieces, the little pieces, the scratches, right? surface finishes and as we're going through and we're in here we're actually laughing as we'll talk about it later but a better surface finish is all you're doing is you're taking off the scratches you make the scratches smaller as you polish 
<coughs> so what do you usually use when you polish? A wheel. Do you do it on a wheel? Or the wrenches are on What is actually doing the polish? Where's the where's the the abrasive? Is it on the wheel? Yeah, it's a loose abrasive, right? So it's like in a putty or a paste that you put on that you, you use to polish it. <clears throat> um, so that usually that's what we use to polish it. it can't, you can't polish it with with a, a block. Um, but all you're doing is you're making the scratches smaller and smaller when you polish. And so smaller scratches means more reflective. And didn't he talk about that when he was talking about the, the EDM? That doing passes where they took off less material at a time would make it more polished. <clears throat> no, smaller, lots of smaller sparks take out smaller pieces. <clears throat> and what's surfacing? I thought it was the the, the size of the the wire. The wire no, the that's the size of the wire determines the curve, the space that's cut out. We'll, we'll talk more about the EDM in, on the next slide. Oh, uh, so what's surfacing? Same as polishing and grinding. <laughs> okay. the, the but we use a grinder to, to surface. But what is surfacing? Mm -hmm. yeah, making one surface nice and flat, consistent across the whole surface. So the surface doesn't have dips or waves or high spots and low spots. I'm trying to make that whole surface nice and flat. <clears throat> so, what's honing? Making more. Yeah, usually we do it on the inside of cylinders. You'll hone it, and it's using stationary pads <clears throat> um, of abrasive or pieces of abrasive to polish it out. Right? So you, it kind of goes around. And so when we're honing, we can get down to a ten thousandth of an inch and taller. <clears throat> so you, you can get that precise. Lapping is kind of related to honing, and same thing here. You're using it and you're, getting, you're using finer and finer grits to make a more, more precise um, thing. And lapping is usually done on flat things, larger flat things. So what is honing? Yeah, basically, but it's like, uh, you know when you sharpen a knife, take it on the whetstone? Honing is the opposite. Instead of moving the knife on the whetstone, you're moving the whetstone on the knife. Oh, okay. That's what lapping and honing are. And so you have a big, solid piece of a grace, a grace that's really fine that you're moving to, to, to knock all the, t the high points off. And that's what this is. On these bottom ones, all these are different lapping. So that's what the L stands for after it. Um, so it goes from 2 to 32 micro inches using the lapping method to, to get this different Another one from the end is Yeah, and these are all based on other machining or turning or profiling um, <clears throat> or grinding. So you kind of you can see this one is by grinding. You can see that one. So on this one, okay, you can see. The streaks, uh -huh. and that's from grinding. So the grinding wheel's got bigger grace. And that's 63 micro inches for the surface finish. <clears throat> and you can see the texture of that. But then starting over here with lapping with half, this is 32 micro inches. It's a lot smoother. So I actually come up and look at the surface finish gauge. If you didn't do it last week, and, and look at that. Yeah. And don't, don't <laughs> rub it. <laughs> rub all your because there's actually scratches now in the two micro inch. Sure, they're a lot deeper. 
a lot deeper than they started. <laughs> well, it wasn't me, because I wasn't here. Who was it? Josh. <laughs> I've only looked at that thing, what? Like, 12 times <laughs> in one day. So, for that fact. Hey, I'm the one to open up the package. <clears throat> and you the one so, who scratched it. All right. So, EDM. We had <laughs> the first one, what was that? Well, they had a, a copper electrode and they just pressed it into it. A mold. <clears throat> that big old so they have that. You have what's called EDM sawing, where they have a, a bigger blade, a blade that, that they do EDM with that, that cuts pieces. I thought that was EDM. Well, EDM is just electro discharge machine. So yeah. we're now, oh, you're not actually having the pieces, you're not having the cutter touch it to, to, to break off pieces. You're using electricity to, to erode it. So either use a copper electrode that you can kind of press into it and let the spark between the profiles as you're going. Or you have a saw where you have a blade that that's bigger, that can cut through material as it comes past it. It's still shooting electrodes yeah. on the saw. And with the saw, saw the blade stays still, and the material moves past it just like a regular saw. It doesn't touch. But it still doesn't touch. But they don't, they're, they're working like like big, big uh, machinery on the EVM? It or depends. Just on um, why are you using them? It depends on how much you want the wire to move. Um, but the wire, you just, the material goes past it and moves, moves around. Um, I've seen the, the first kind where it just goes down. The machine is like this big. <clears throat> um, it's like this tall. And But it's got, most of that's just an enclosure to keep you away from that spark. Well, it's got to be enclosed. Yeah. Because yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to get shocked <laughs> by that. Open it up. <clears throat> um, and then they had the wire EDM. And then having the fourth axis, so now instead of being the wire stepping down, now the wire can move side to side. And what does that give you? Friction. No, not friction. It's but it's not touching still. What does moving the wire side to side do? Mm -hmm. Chamfer? Yeah, it give you chamfers, give you tapers. For <clears throat> then you can add a fifth axis on, which is your rotating for your material. So now you can cut spirals on pieces with with it. Um, another thing is with the five or with the fourth axis on it, you can have a piece like this and have teeth that are cut like that on it. So if you're looking from the top, so these teeth are actually on. Going at an angle, they're not just keep going straight up and down. So you could, you could cut that profile with the wire EDM oh, and yeah. actually have it curve around. Is that only done in water? Yep, yeah, you have to just do it. water at the, all the time. Yeah, you cut the it, could, it could be another one, but they usually use just plain water. <clears throat> yeah, deionized water, right? Deionized water. So What's deionized, deionized mean? Yeah, it doesn't. Like it doesn't have a bunch of minerals and stuff, and it's just pure water. So the electricity don't have that gravel until we just yeah. go through it. Yeah. So with the wire, <clears throat> So. Uh, and then we have photo etching. So what's photo etching? Right, we didn't watch a video on that, but what is it? You want a photo or something? <laughs> yeah. You use a photo, and so basically you put... That's how they make circuit boards, right? Mm -hmm. They put some a chemical on. First, they start with a thing that has silicon in the middle, copper on both sides. They shine a light on it, and then where the light shines, the acid will eat off um, and leave what what was left. So they can do the same thing with, on a smaller scale, make small things. So like this piece here, with these small holes in there. They didn't actually go in and cut those out. They made a drawing of it, and then they could shine light through it onto a chemical bath, and then have it etched out. Stamped out? No, not stamped. Chemically etched. So they, they put a film on the, on the, on the metal, they shine a light through an image, and then wherever the light doesn't hit, 
the chemicals will, will eat. So they put it in a bath of acid, and wherever the light didn't penetrate, That's it'll true. eat off. Same thing with for these. And this is kind of an example of circuitry. How they do that, that on circuit boards. Oh, that's how they're, yeah. oh, they're etched and they're dipped. Yeah. It's a big etched board and dipped. Yeah. And that's how they're etched. They have a, a chemical on it. They shine a light through wherever that light shines, the chemical hardens. Um, and then they rinse it off and then they put it in acid and wherever the chemical's not, the acid eats that's through. Eat through yeah. And then they've got, I don't know if the, the camera will see this. I don't see you up in here. The holes are really tiny on here. I don't know, I, I can't even get my calipers. I'd have to measure from the top side to see how big those holes are. But they're super tiny. And so you couldn't machine that with, with otherwise. So here I've actually put a design guide for um, for it. And this kind of shows how it works. Is there's the metal there, and then you have the the, the photo set, the thing that's gonna that they they develop that hardens. And so wherever there's the gap in that, <clears throat> the ass will eat through. So it actually kind of undercuts a little bit. But depending on your material thickness, that undercut varies. If it's a thick material, you have to leave in the acid more, it'll, it'll eat more of it. So you can go to this and see more about it. So, any questions? showed you so you can see more about it here also. <clears throat> Questions? Alright.